I want to apologize in advance because this is the 15th time I've recorded this video because I'm pretty critical of myself and I keep making mistakes. So what I'm going to do on this video is I'm not going to re-record if I make mistakes. So if I kind of like fumble over my words, forgive me for that. I literally can't record this another time. Um, so what I want to talk to you today about is Goose Chase. Goose Chase is a web-based scavenger hunt program that can be used as a traditional scavenger hunt where the participants are physically moving about finding clues. Um, and it can also be used as a virtual tool. So the scavenger hunt can be uh, a virtual scavenger hunt along the lines of a web quest. Um, but what's interesting about Goose Chase is as the students are finding the clues and, and responding to the clues, um, it's it's live in the fact that the teacher can be at, uh, at their desk and watch the students responding and the teacher can communicate with the students and she can see she or he can see their answers and say hey good answer good job or maybe you should look uh, a little bit further into that um, and the students can also communicate with the teacher if they don't understand a clue they can say hey i don't really understand what's going on and it's a real time um activity which I think is really cool to clear up any misunderstandings and have students who normally would just kind of give up if they don't understand anything. You have this, the assistance of the teacher uh, in the moment. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. I'm gonna take you to the website of education model. Obviously, we're gonna wanna be using the education model. Um, there, so you wanna go to goosechase.com forward slash edu. There, are, there is a free, uh, a free version of this uh, and it limits you obviously on the number of students that you can have participating at the same time and how many games you can have going on at the same time. I subscribe to the $50 a year model and that uh, definitely accommodates me perfectly. It's got more than I need in terms of uh, student allowance and um, teams and all of that. So that you can actually have more than one game going at the same time. Now the games, the scavenger hunts themselves can be um, they can be synchronous in, in terms of like it can be going on right now. I give you a time limit of an hour uh, or so, or it can be asynchronous where you just give the scavenger hunt and they complete it uh, within the time frame that you have set for them. Um, so I just want to show you an example of um, uh, one of the missions that was created. Now, I have obviously you'll see that several of my missions here, uh, I use this with directions. I will have the students, uh, the clues will be directions given in French and they would have to navigate themselves around the campus. And every time they go somewhere, they find a clue, they take a picture of the clue and the, the image is submitted back through the program on an activity, on a feed. So it's live and, and they can, um, and you can release the clues automatically. You can release the clues manually once they have found the correct clue. Um, I went and found, they have a library pre-made with uh, teachers who have uploaded their own uh, their own um, scavenger hunts. And I thought this was really cool for say, maybe like an, um, an uh, English teacher, this can go as low as any level of student that can use a computer or a, um, a smartphone or whatever. So if I don't know that second, third grade, this works really well, but I know that there was one I was looking at yesterday was a fifth grade um, level. But so just give me an idea. Um, this one obviously is on a book report. And you'll see here that the teacher has created these missions. She's assigned points it, as it scores the game automatically. The teacher, when going over it with the class, can uh, add bonus points or change points, take away points if the, the, the clue, the answer was incorrect. But you'll see that this, um, the reason it can work so well with the virtual model is the responses can be text in text form. Um, and, or they can be with photo evidence. They can take a picture with their phone or they can upload a picture from their library. Um, and it can also be um, video submissions. I like this really, uh, this was really interesting to me, was this uh, question about text structure. And so the teacher here has said videos only. And so she asked the question, um, she asked several questions about understand it were their picture well, you know were their pictures how did they add to the text did that all the chapters have the same narrator and the student would have to record themselves explaining this answer so that uh lets the teacher know that they're not just googling the answer and copying and pasting they actually have to have comprehension of what's going on and so those those images that they submit or those videos they submit those text answers those will all be in a feed that you can show 
the class once you come all together uh you can pull it up you can download each um submission and you can put it on a slideshow and so say team one slideshow uh, here's your scavenger hunt, uh results and you can go through and say okay is this correct why is this not correct let's how could it have done better so it's a really uh interactive um activity uh, and you can do this for any subject i i was looking at some yesterday for biology um uh, this is obviously English, but they have them for every so math. It's really cool. I saw some examples of the, the, the mission was work out this problem and take a picture of your work and submit that as your uh, answer to the clue. So there's so many different ways to engage the students with this, this scavenger hunt. Again, like I said, physical or um, virtual. I just want to show you one that was um, just so you can have an idea of what submissions look like. Let's take one that I did uh, last year. I'm sorry, in 2020, February 4th. So I'm going to look for submissions. And you'll see that these are these will be these were submitted. These are pictures that you see those little blue pieces of paper. Those are like they would find their directions. They would get there, take that picture. I would see that and I would say, OK, that is correct. And I would submit the second clue. You can time the clues to be released. Um, you can, you know, stagger the, the release of the clues or um, you can have them all available at one time. So it's it's really just a way for students to locate information. Uh, you can do it, like I said, physically, the clues can be something like they have to like decipher something or they can be virtual and the students are reading something and answering the question um, in text form, video form or with photo evidence. This works on uh, Android devices and iOS devices. However, there is a um, an application that is that you can get on the Chromebook. It's the only um, device that, other than a, a portable device, that will allow the download of an application that will uh, the students can use um, to, to submit their answers and do the uh, scavenger hunt. But really quickly, just so you see, this game code is here. The students just go to the website or open the app, type in the game code. The clues are there. They go about finding their answers and submitting them. And then it's great for uh, after the, the activity discussion. Um,